Come on, Oliver. He seems friendly enough. Let's introduce ourselves. I don't know. He seems rather odd. Oh, come on now. He is helping us after all. Beg pardon, but we've all had our chance of being the oddball around here. Like landing bunker first in a turntable well, for instance. All right, enough. Duck and Oliver were near the small railway, observing the new diesel at work. His name was Sidney, and was unfortunately quite forgetful, and suffered from short-term memory loss. Frank and Mike, the small railway engines, were doing their best to teach him the important procedure of the ballast chute, but were not surprisingly finding little success in that venture. All right, uh, Mark is it? It's Mike. Oh, all right. My apologies, my friend. And Franz. I prefer Frank, thank you, but I think I'll start using that as my nickname. Okay, I got it. And you are? Wait, do you mean me? Yes, of course. I just told you, I'm... Frank. No, I'm Mike. All right, Sydney, would you like us to continue our little lecture about the shoot? The what? The shoot, where we've been idling this entire time. Huh? What the? Grease and oil? Where the blazes am I? Sydney's driver pulled the lever and the diesel roared into life. He set off to push some other ballast wagons into a siding. Frank and Mike were horrified. Honestly, it's these outrageous nimrods that give us diesels a bad name. We've tried explaining this blasted shoot to him, and he can't even remember our names, let alone where he is. You know, your voice gets all high-pitched and squeaky when you're angry. It's kind of adorable. Mike and Frank began arguing as usual, until Duck popped alongside. I see you've met the new Diesel. Is he friendly? He's an utter imbecile! I believe it's more along the lines of short-term memory loss. There's someone in the cab, there's just no one at the controls, if you get my meaning. The poor engine. I suppose we must be as accommodating as possible. He means well, after all. Yes, but he's simply idiotic! Must you be so grumpy, Frank? Beg pardon, but when you and Mike aren't arguing, you're being extremely derogatory. Later, Oliver saw Sidney shunting some coal wagons. He decided to see how the new diesel was getting on. Hey there, chap. How is everything? Oh, it's marvelous. Simply marvelous. Can I ask you something? Shoot. Where am I? And how did I get here? This probably isn't a philosophical question, is it? Nah, I'm just lost. Tidmouth will be your best bet. Just follow the line. I'm sure your driver will know the route. Thanks, buddy. Best be off, though. I'm bound for well. I have no idea, but I suppose that's what makes life very exciting. Sydney rolled away quite oblivious to absolutely everything, and Oliver was even more convinced that the newcomer was quite bizarre. The Little Western Branch Line engines had swiftly organized a meeting to discuss the pressing topic of Sydney. Ha <laughs> ha! What a lark! Laughed Douglas. Best thing to happen to this branch line. I haven't laughed so much since, well, probably yesterday. Suggested Donald. Douglas, we really shouldn't be laughing at his expense. He really means well. Oh, we understand that, Duck. Yesterday he told us he was lost, and the wee diesel was fumbling in the goods shed without a clue. Enough! shouted Oliver, whose voice rose above the uproar. We've needed some help around here for a long time. Now we've gotten it. And although Sydney is a bit... well... you know. Not the shiniest carriage in the shed. Thank you, Mike. We need to stick together as a team. If it's one thing I've learned, no engine will ever get written off as useless on this railway. That shut them up. The engines wholeheartedly agreed. Duck, in particular, was very proud. The following day, Sydney was loading his cars under the ballast chute, but had forgotten where to stop, causing ballast to pour all over him. <laughs> Better luck next time, squirmed Frank. He was doing his best to not say anything offensive.
further down the line, there was trouble. Douglas's fire bars had collapsed a mile or so from the hill. He was stranded and was in need of assistance. Luckily, Sydney was dispatched to help push him to safety. Hello there, laddie. Thanks for the help. Just don't get us lost now. No problem, Donald, right? Douglas, laddie. Oh, sorry. Now, how in the world did I end up here? <laughs> I love this guy. Sydney began to push Douglas up the hill. He was making good progress, but he had become rather disoriented during the journey. Douglas did his best, but he was having trouble giving Sydney the proper directions. Stop here at the signal box. The points will take us into the passing siding. The driver says the train pulled Sydney over the points. Douglas says that Sydney forgot the advice as soon as it was given. Sydney had absolutely no recollection of the events at all. Anyway, Sydney hadn't stopped in time. He rolled into the siding out of the way. No matter. We'll reverse quickly and make our way. But they didn't. Just as they were about to leave, Oliver thundered by. His brakes had failed, and the foolish freight cars had knocked their guard off his van a few miles off. Help! Help! The points Gangway. were changed just in time, and Oliver rumbled over the bridge and tumbled down the hill. His freight cars jumped the rails and crashed into a heap. Luckily, no one was hurt. Douglas was speechless. Sydney's small mistake had saved him and Oliver from a horrific collision. He was in awe of the oblivious diesel shunter that stumbled into their yard. Well, would you look at that? Guess we were lucky, eh? Yes, I suppose we were. And it was at that moment when Douglas and all of the little western engines knew that every engine has its day. Sydney, of course, may never be aware of his heroic act, but perhaps that is what made it all the more magnificent.